The views, opinions and information shared during the KC Youth Services podcast series belong solely to the individuals involved. Any recommendations or advice given during the podcast is general in nature and does not replace the need to seek professional advice where necessary. If you are in need of urgent assistance, please call 000 or the Kids Helpline on 1800 55 1800. The City of Casey proudly acknowledges the traditional owners, Casey's Aboriginal communities and their rich culture and pays respect to their elders past, present and future. We acknowledge Aboriginal people as Australia's first peoples and as the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we work and live. I would also like to acknowledge that we are recording this podcast today, gratefully on Bunurong Country. Hello everyone and welcome to Season 4, Episode 6 of the Casey Youth Services Podcast. We are your hosts, I'm Taryn. And I'm Nat. And today we are pleased to be joined by Sports Coordinator Mitch, who's from RecLink. Welcome Mitch. Hi, good to be here. Very grateful to be here. I'm looking forward to this one. I reckon it'll be great. Mm. We like to start with a bit of an icebreaker. So the question today is, what is the most unique style or fashion trend you have ever rocked? Mm. (laughs) Good question. (laughs) You've got a good mo going on at the moment. I do have a mo going on at the moment, yes. I um, was getting quite a, a bit of facial hair. I had a bit of a shave last night and I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep them out. I'm going to keep them out. See how it goes. I get mixed feedback. Yeah. I feel like I am one to rock trackies with my socks tucked into my trackies and <laughs> Birkenstocks. Oh, no. Um, and I'm not ashamed about it. I think it's great. I feel really comfortable. Yeah. I wear it down the street and I go, is this appropriate? But I do it anyway. Because I feel good. <laughs> yeah, why not? Exactly. Comfort is key. Exactly. exactly. I'm all about comfort. Can't have the wind on your ankles. <laughs> 100%. Exactly. What about yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, I think I, especially in my teens, I would have certain favourite colours. So there was a stage where I had orange as my favourite and green as my favourite. So I would just have clothes that were those colours. And thankfully... <laughs> I never went like orange or orange or green on green, <laughs> but I would have some piece of clothing. Like I even found pants that were orange that I would wear. So yeah, I, I had, yeah, in my teens, I would be obsessed with a certain color and then I had to have at least one piece of clothing that was that color. <laughs> I feel like you're still the same. You still have those like awesome orange bright <laughs> shoes. Like I feel like you're just a burst of color every time. But I try to be more colors now. I'm not one color. That's right. Yeah. What about you, Taryn? I would have to say probably the muzzer, like the mullet. Oh, like really oh, short nice. layers at the top. Yes. And like really teased up and then like the side fringe. <sighs> like you've, you've got photos of that, yeah? Mm. I do. Oh, you got to bring those in. in the archives. <laughs> 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 we need to see them. Yes. <laughs> you would rock that. Yeah. <sighs> Nothing so wrong funny. with the mullet. So, Mitch, can you tell us what your role is and a little bit about your journey into the role? Yeah, so as Taryn said, I'm a sports coordinator. I work for an organisation called RecLink and we provide free sport and recreation opportunities um, in the community. So we work in a lot of different communities, um, but I'm lucky enough that I get to work in the city of Casey, which I really love. I find... Everyone that I get to work with really lovely, um, KCU services included. So we provide sporting opportunities for people who may not have them otherwise. So we more work with people who may experience some form of disadvantage and we just provide opportunities to be involved in sport, um, to exercise, to be active because we know how important exercise is for physical health, mental health. Um, And I suppose that's a little bit of my journey as to how I got into this role. So uh, when I was young, I certainly faced my own challenges. And I just want to acknowledge that if there's anyone out there going through those same challenges, that it's really okay. And there's some amazing organisations out there that are doing some amazing work. And there's definitely a lot of support out there for young people. I was introduced to RecLink through that period. And we run an All Abilities Footy League. So I played in that footy league for about three years um, and it was 
really special. It was a, a time where there's a lot of people in a similar position where they're really trying to better themselves and start living happy and fulfilling lives. And it was just really important. RecLink reached me at a time where it just mattered a lot. So to be able to work for RecLink full time is um, pretty awesome because there's no bigger advocate for RecLink than me because I've actually um, had firsthand experience with the impact that um, RecLink has. So yeah, that was a little bit about my introduction into RecLink and there's been a lot of stuff that have happened kind of between now and then. That was about 10 years ago and yeah. That's so special and I think like, you know, it's well received by young people. Um, the programs that you've run within the youth centres, yeah, they love it such an awesome journey that you've had there and it's mm. great to see that you're able to like advocate and work for RecLink now so love that mm. brilliant so you actually were technically a participant in RecLink and then you your journey has you're now a facilitator yep so That's special yeah. yeah I was working part-time as the coach of that footy team that I played for 10 years ago wow um, so that was really special. Yeah. Um, and really, it was a footy coach, but what I kind of tried to do was just facilitate an experience for the participants. So I think what I would try and do is make them feel really a part of it. Yeah. So instead of me running it and organising it, I would try and bring people in and I would kind of say, where do you think you should play and where do you think they should play and how about you take training and... Uh, I just think it's really important that people feel validated yeah. and a part of something. Yeah. So that's what I kind of tried to do because, you know, we talk about it being sport, but it's so much more than that. Mm. You know, it's about what's underneath it. It's about belonging. It's a part, It's about connection. It's about, yeah, just feeling a part of something. I think, yeah, community and, and connection are just so important. And uh, obviously the last couple of years were, were, were pretty tough. So probably now more than ever, you know, it's just really important that we all kind of find our tribe and we find somewhere where we belong and we feel safe and we feel supported. And I guess that's what I try and do when I run the various sport and rec programs that we run. Love that. That sounds great. Mm. It sounds very, very rewarding. So can you actually share with us what a highlight of, of it all? There's a lot. Many years ago, there was what was called Reckling India. So we actually went to India um, wow. and run an AFL carnival oh my um, in India. So I was actually sponsored to go there for the first year. Um, and then by that stage, I was working full time. So the next year, I was able to pay my own way. But we ran a footy carnival with kids from all over India. So we took them for training. We ran a carnival with them. And it was just such an amazing experience being in the middle of Mumbai mm. on this oval that there was no grass. It was just red dirt and you're playing Aussie rules footy. And the kids love footy over there. <laughs> like they love cricket. Mm. That's kind of their sport, mm. but they really love footy. And yeah, my partner, she's a bit of a question asker. And one day we we're just in the car and she just said to me, well, what do you reckon the happiest day of your life was? And I was like, mm, is that a trick question? Do I need to say <laughs> the day I met you? But I said, I'm not sure about the happiest day of my life, but I feel like probably the most meaningful thing I've ever done was going to India. Yeah, it was incredible. And then I just see the impact that our footy league has here as well for the participants that play in it. It just means a lot to them. And, and I suppose that's what we try and provide as big and as special of an experience as possible because... We have players that play in vests, so they mm. might have a disability or they might be female or they might just be apprehensive about playing full contact sport. So they're protected basically. So they get a free kick when they get the ball and they can't be tackled. And I remember I was out there one game because I like to get the ball to those players so that they you know, can get the ball a bit. And I handballed it to a player and he was in the goal square. So he was about five metres out from goal and he lined up and he kicked a point. Oh. <laughs> And I was shattered for him. I thought, oh, my God, you actually Aww. kind of missed that, but somehow he did. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I went up to him after the game and I said, oh, mate, you know, how close was that? Like, you nearly got a goal. And then he was so excited and he said to me, did you see the point I kicked? Like, that was my first point I've ever kicked. Aww, and he was great. so happy that he kicked a point. That's great. And it just really showed me how important the small wins are mm. and just, like, never underestimate the impact that you can have because you just never know what it may mean for someone else 
So there's a lot of those stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I watched uh, a fair few of my friends played football when we were in school and I used to go, I would go and watch them and I would sit there and I'm like, no way am I getting out there. Like, they hit hard. Mm, yep. It's yep. fun. It, it is fun. <laughs> it's a full on game though. Like, yeah, I watch some games sometimes. I don't go on anymore. I'm definitely just a bystander, but yep. yeah, it's a pretty full on game. Yes. Yep. Love that. Um. So you kind of touched on it already, but what is your opinion on the benefits of recreational sport in community, particularly for young people? Mm. Yeah, so I think that stuff around belonging and feeling a part of a team is um, super important. Mm. Typically, you're probably going to find some positive role models who I guess you can kind of look up to and hopefully steer you on, you know, a good path in life. I just know kind of for me when I was young and I was playing sport, it was an opportunity to forget about everything that I had going on in my life. So, you know, I, I could play sport. I could play footy, for instance, and I could be totally focused on the ball for an hour and I wasn't thinking about anything else apart from getting the ball. I was, I was basically present. I was present in the moment. And I think, you know, that can be a really good escape, but just give people a bit of a break and just give them – some time to not take life so seriously and, and just have a bit of fun and, and enjoy themselves. And as I said, that's kind of what I'll continually try and instill in people at our programs. Even, you know, like sport may not necessarily be a comfortable experience for some people. It actually can be quite negative for some people if they've had some potentially bullying. And um, I just like to try and tell people to give things a go and, if they are feeling some butterflies in their stomach and their heart racing, then like just that you're really safe in this space and, and it's actually quite good to push yourself outside of your comfort zone sometimes yeah. because there can be growth and there can be confidence and there can be self-esteem and all this really good stuff can actually come from sport. It may just be sport, but as I said, there's a lot kind of going on underneath and then we hope that people can then take that out into their life and go, oh, I had that experience at footy where I felt really scared and I really didn't want to do it, but I kind of did it anyway. And then maybe they can use that as a reference point for other areas of their life and go, oh, there's that job interview and I really don't want to go for it. But I remember at footy when I felt really scared and I did it anyway and I actually felt really good on the other side. But hopefully they have that memory that they can then fall back on. Um, Perfect. Yeah, I think it can be really important. Awesome yeah. that you like foster that space as well for them to do that. But yeah, when you were saying about like being present and stuff, it's almost like it sounds like it's practicing mindfulness mm. when you're out on the field or like doing whatever sport you're doing. That yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. Well, what are some of the popular uh, games and sports that people play? Like, what what is everyone asking for? Um. I mean, City of Casey, I could probably run five soccer programs a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would yes. have, like, yes. really big numbers. As soon as anyone comes in, the first thing they go, oh, can I have FIFA? Can yeah. I have FIFA? Yep. <laughs> Very popular in this area. And I wasn't much of a soccer player when I was younger. Um, but that's okay. I still go, if that's what you want to do, I really want to, like, make that experience for you because I know how much it means to you. You know, probably my thing was footy and I knew how much it meant to me, but... Yeah, basketball is also a really popular one. Um, there's some pretty awesome young basketball players in the city of Casey. We actually play a game quite a bit called spike ball. So it's kind of a hybrid of volleyball and four square. You, it almost looks like a little trampoline. Um, you, you bounce the ball on the net and it, it goes to the other team and, and back and forth. But it's just a really fun one. You know, young people think, oh, what's kind of going on over here? And we've lots of ways to modify it and make it really fun and really accessible. Um, volleyball, some really great young volleyballs in the city of Casey. And I mean, not that it's about being great really, especially at our programs, it's really about participation and inclusion. But yeah, we play a really cool lawn game called Finscar. Yeah, you basically throw a wooden block at another wooden block and try and knock them down. And yeah, a lot. We've kind of got those really mainstream sports, but then you've got some stuff outside of that, like spike ball and Finscar and... Yeah, I'd just like to try and give people a bit of range, give people an experience and if they like it, cool. And then if not, they tried something new. Yeah, that's mm. it. That's awesome. So in terms of the service delivery, because it's 
it is face to face and it's quite, you know, you're getting physical and whatnot. What are some of the barriers that you've faced over the years and how have you overcome it? Specifically speaking from like the lockdowns and stuff, that would have been tricky to run like sports workshops <laughs> and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. So um, unfortunately, um, sport wasn't considered essential. So it was really challenging um, through that period. We started an online platform called Recklink Connect. And that was basically born out of lockdown. So Mm -hmm. we had sport programs and exercise programs running kind of every hour, five days a week on Zoom. That's a lot. Yeah, Yeah. we had a lot of programs. We had things from Tai Chi to chair yoga to um, fitness to I was running a 15-minute skipping session, a bit of a hit class. That would have been hard. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. But I mean, I felt like it was an easy sell because it's like you've got 15 minutes. Mm. Like yeah. 15 minutes is all you need to change the trajectory of your day. Like you can spend 15 minutes doing some exercise and feel really good all day. Like it yeah. doesn't necessarily take much. Like exercise doesn't have to be this big thing where you're in the gym for hours. It can be going for a walk or it can be doing some skipping or it, it just – it doesn't have to – you don't have to do much to feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, but even that skipping session, as much as it was for the participants, it gave me so much purpose as well. Like it gave me a reason to get out of bed and, and jump on the laptop and um, exercise because as for everyone, it was a super challenging time. And as I said, in a time where we needed probably connection more than anything, we, we didn't have that, but we had that to kind of lean on. Um, so we did that. We also have what's called sport share which is basically we give sports equipment to organisations. So maybe some organisations that are working with some people who maybe um, have some financial difficulty, we can then give them free sports equipment. So we were still able to deliver that at times. It was tough, but I mean, Recklink Connect has still continued, even though we're not in lockdown because it was really successful and we were getting some really good attendance and some really good feedback. So it was one of the few things that was good that came out of lockdown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome that you guys were able to do that. Yeah. Yeah, provide that. Pivot online, we all know the feels. Yeah, we all had to do it. Are there any uh, exciting things in works that you are allowed to actually share with us? I'd love to have these big secrets, but <laughs> I really don't. Um, we got a lot of cool stuff happening, most definitely. Mm-hmm. We just finalised an agreement with one Casey, so Casey Race and Casey Arc. We can offer young people free gym and free swim Ooh, at the pool. So cool. That's amazing. So they, yeah, if you're listening, reach out. So that's a really good one for us. It's yeah, just being able to, to offer that. We feel really good about it, and I know that um, some people that have already signed up. I feel like probably wouldn't have been able to access it without that agreement put in place. So it feels like we're really meeting a need and we're really doing something good for the community. So another program that has been really successful has been a self-defence class. So we're running a mm-hmm. self-defence class at Limbrook Community Centre with an awesome self-defence teacher. And we've had probably 25 to 30 kind of coming each week, a lot of newly yeah. arrived from Afghanistan. And we've been able to kind of take them through their weeks and then at the end they receive some certificates of basic kind of boxing and basic self-defense and I just really like that we can kind of give them something that they can then walk away with yeah and I suppose yeah you just never know what that could lead to like I really love talking about kind of pathways and whether someone kind of found an interest in self-defense or or boxing but yeah as I said we just try and provide kind of continual positive experiences And then as again, hopefully people can kind of refer back to that. And the more that we can provide those positive experiences, hopefully the more people feel that, yeah, life can be good and they can live kind of happy, fulfilling lives. And yeah, a couple other things, a bit of pickleball. Don't know if you know pickleball is kind of a modified version of tennis and a bigger version of kind of table tennis. It's really fun. I have, yeah. I've been seeing it everywhere, actually. It's become quite popular. I've not heard of it. I think it's like kind of in the States, it's the biggest growing sport. Mm. Um, It's really fun, but yeah, maybe we'll have to come in, run a session if you haven't heard of it. Yes, please. Yeah. (laughs) That's really awesome. And it it sounds like, you know, all of the programs and stuff, you guys do the work to make it really accessible for Mm. young people, Mm -hmm. which is really 
great because sometimes it can be expensive and it can be tricky to get to and whatnot. Mm. But um, more to that, is there any certain criteria that young people have to meet to take part in RecLink activities? Not really. So um, we are working with predominantly 16 to 25 year olds, but that's not saying that if you are that little bit younger that you can't join in. I suppose we just try and yeah make them as accessible as possible. We try and break down barriers around finances and, and transport. So we try and make programs really visible and um, in spaces that are close to public transport, but certainly no criteria. We kind of want as many young people involved in our programs. And I guess the more diverse, the better. I heard a, a sentence the other day and it was um, diversity only enriches the quality of our programs. And I just really loved that. Yeah. Um, so we work with a really diverse bunch of young people in the city of Casey and um yeah, it, you really walk away. Even for me, I just walk away from those programs feeling really good and we're doing a good job. So, yeah, no criteria. Just come and be open and don't be afraid to make mistakes and you're just really safe and supported in the sessions. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That, yeah, and that no criteria. You can you can come along. But in saying that, how can schools and young people get involved? Like how do they come to your activities? So we are on social media. Um, so we're on Facebook and Instagram, RecLink South East Metro. Um, so you can definitely follow us on Instagram and like our Facebook page. We try and put updates on those pages as much as possible. We've got a website, RecLink.org. There'll be some contact details as to how you can get in touch, but I've also got an email address and a phone number. There's some promotion stuff on the um, City of Casey website. But yeah, if you yeah want to reach out, You'd probably be being referred to me and yeah, we do a lot, but I will always try and make stuff work. If you'd like to meet Mitch or meet some of the Reckling crew, we actually have a sports program here at the Narriwarra Youth Centre in Term 3. Make sure you check out our socials to find out all the details. So good. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of Season 4, Episode 6. We hope you're able to learn a little bit more about the fantastic organisation that is Reckling. And also about the awesome Mitch who we're lucky to have in Casey. Um, thank you so much for coming, Mitch, and sharing with us today. It's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. No worries. Thanks for having me. Anytime. And as always, all appropriate links will be attached to the show notes. So we will put all the details you need to know to get involved, to stay up to date with all the exciting things happening in Casey Youth Services Please feel free to follow, like and share us on social, our social media accounts at Casey Youth Services. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Also feel free to stop by the Casey Youth Centres. We're open 1.30 to 5.15 Monday to Friday with extended hours exclusive to Hampton Park. Check out our website for more details. Until next time, take care and stay safe. Thank you.